to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. One of the problems, not specifically on this issue, just in general, that uh, that um, uh, let's put it this way: money trumps um, peace sometimes. <laughs> In other words, commercial interests are very powerful interests. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 However, sometimes something a little different happens. Sometimes you just might find a little pocket of gravity. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. You typically would not be able to see this. Conditions are right that we're actually seeing a mirage. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. A mode of dust in a sunbeam. A mode of dust in a sunbeam. A mode of dust in a sunbeam. I read a book once, and it told me that Earth was just dry land. But then I started my education, and those words began to fade away as I found out that we are on a ball that is flying through space, millions of miles away from the sun. And before I could even read, I knew the order of the planets and could sing along with the rest of the class. And never did any of us dare question the geniuses that were before us who figured it all out, no matter how far off they were with their estimates, whether or not they thought the earth was stationary, we never looked into that, we never thought to question it. We were told that these people were smart, we saw the pictures of them with their cool style, with the fluff under their necks, the compass in their hands. Never did we ever question their methods or find out how smart they really were. There were no IQ tests back then that we were aware of, but the science is continuing to change. Our atmosphere has gone from a couple hundred miles away to 400,000 miles. The planets aren't even in the same order that was ingrained into our brains at such a young age. Our solar system within my lifetime has gone from flat and easy to understand to all of a sudden flying through space at speeds that no one has ever seen or measured or detected. NASA is telling us now that there is a man-made barrier surrounding Earth. And of course this news came shortly after scientists detected an impenetrable barrier where deep space should be. And no one thinks this is crazy or alarming, but if we say that that barrier might be the firmament and that Earth may not be moving at all, we start getting a lot of hate. We become censored, persecuted, and now they are putting out some major damage control and I'm sure many of you have heard about the behind the curve or you've seen the National Geographic video 
where we debunk ourselves time and time again and it's just a matter of time before they plan that fake trip to the edge to finally put a stop to this nonsense but before they do while I still have a channel I'm seeing many go down I want to do something that many of us have done and that's prove to you and myself that earth is round I'm going to try to do this because the documentary where we debunked ourselves we were trying to prove that it's flat so I'm going to try to prove to you that it's round and I'm going to do that in several ways but the first way I'm going to do it is to prove that we have a picture of our round earth if it is round and they've been as far away from it as they say they have been this should be very easy to do and it will stop there and I will go no further so let's go ahead and get started and I want to begin by looking at the pictures that were taken by the first and only people to ever get far enough away from Earth to see what it looks like from deep space. Yes, I'm talking about the Apollo missions, and these pictures are very important, and they should be real, given that they still claim to this day that we went to the moon, and that the pictures taken on the way to the moon and from the moon were authentic. So let's start by looking at this picture here that was taken in the background where an astronaut was posing with the flag and I want you to remember what that earth looks like right there it's going to be important in just a second but now we're going to skip to these guys setting up the pictures of earth that are so famous from deep space and they were allegedly on their way to the moon and halfway there when they turned the camera around put it in the window and saw the blue marble and there it is with the clouds that just happened to be as long as an entire hemisphere which who knows that could be possible we're not going to talk about that but these guys told us that the camera was in the window which makes sense because you can see the outer edge of the earth or so we thought however this wasn't the outer edges of the earth this was just a round window and you can tell that the camera isn't in the window because someone passes in between the camera and the the window itself and as they are being coached at how to take this picture and to adjust the exposure levels on the camera they accidentally expose their fraud and show that this window is in the distance they're just zoomed in on it a little bit and that terminator line that we see is just an insert probably some cardboard inserts that they put in there to look like earth is a half earth kind of like there's a half moon and we bought it it looks legit until you see them remove the insert and again change the exposure levels to show us what the inside of their cabin looks like so here it is pay attention when they actually remove that terminator line you can see it yourself not making this up there's been documentaries about this where they were caught red-handed faking these pictures not sure why they would have to if they were really on their way to the moon they would not have to use such trickery they did not realize this footage would get leaked out to the public they sent it in because I'm sure they had tons of footage of them setting this stuff up and did not mean for this to get out but there's the same earth right there you can see that is not earth that is literally just the sky they could have been at ground level looking up at the sky pretending it's earth that's why there's nothing but clouds spanning across the entire surface of the earth and if you compare them to the earth on the flag you can't tell which is which because they're exactly the same but the one on the right is the one in the background during the moon picture that's how they got that they literally used cut and paste in real life not on a computer because that technology most likely didn't exist back then but they cut it out the old-fashioned way and that's how we got that picture of earth in the background it was very important that they showed us the earth in the background you don't recall seeing the Sun in the background on the moon because that was not important we already knew what the Sun looked like and we assumed it was millions of miles away it was not a space race that's what they were trying to do and so that is a very good example of why we have some trust issues with these pictures and as Jaron said at the end of that documentary hmm that's interesting and that's how I felt about that and so that's just one of many pictures. What I'm now going to do is look at the very first and original blue marble that was taken during Apollo 17 
that has been on more history books and science books than any picture on earth. <laughs> and I can remember staring at this thing in awe as a young child and going, wow, the scientists were right, our ancestors were dumb, it's round, just look at it. <laughs> but one day, I saw this meme that said, on this cartoon world, it is dark in Tokyo, Moscow, London, New York, Los Angeles, Honolulu, and Sydney simultaneously. And I thought, this has to be a ridiculous joke. There's no way that this is reality. Let me look up how I can debunk this really quick and pull up a daylight map of Earth and compare. Because we know where it's daylight. We can call the people and say, hey, is the sun up over there? Yes, it is. So I put this globe on a daylight map of Earth and realized that that meme was more correct than my science textbooks and that it reveals entire continents that would be in darkness that should be in light. Then you look up and see North America. A third of it should be in daylight. So many places should have daylight that would be in darkness. And you can do this with pretty much any picture of Earth, but this is one that was said to be real. I'm very impressed with this picture and how they obtained it given the technology of their time. But the powers of this world, the magicians that run this place and create our reality for us with cartoons, animations, and all sorts of different tricks are very good at what they do. And not trying to give them glory, but they have deceived the world. It's not easy. And it doesn't take much. Just got to get the news anchors to believe it, your teachers to believe it, and you're good to go for many generations until someone starts asking the right questions. And that's what we're doing. And no, NASA's not the only one in on it. Here's Russia's picture. And it is actually smaller than our Earth picture. So we beat them on that and the space race to put men on the moon. <laughs> Never saw footage from them going to the moon. But these fake Earth pictures have not stopped. They put out ridiculous ones where there's nothing but ocean. There's no daylight map of Earth that will ever show just oceans and no dry land, which is actually Earth in the beginning. So it's ridiculous that they keep doing what they're doing and putting out these pictures. And you can look at all of them and hear what the experts have to say. If you haven't heard, I can show you right now what they say. So listen to what the experts have to say and try not to laugh. And in 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmon made this. And it had wide appeal too. For example, it ended up as the default background on the iPhone. I didn't even know until I bought an iPhone um, and turned it on and kind of did a little happy dance. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. Up until that point, there was no realistic color map of the globe anywhere. So the land layer here comes from the moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer aboard Terra. And the tricky part here was the weather. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then there was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat. It looks kind of flat, kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just hit Command Z a lot. There's artistry, artistry to creating, to creating the, world. the world. Well, that was definitely interesting, to say the least, that our pictures of Earth are animated or photoshopped, and they have to be. And as he said himself, without photoshopping it, it looked flat. <laughs> so, strange that he would use those words. But here is a picture, there are lots of them that they say are real, where you see the dark side of the moon, and never is it ever lit up like it should be, because it's not really dark. It is the far side, and if the sun is shining on the earth from this angle, it should also be shining onto the moon. But it's not, which tells me this is also computer animated. But not all pictures of the curve 
or the earth itself are fake computer animated images there are some really good tricks they can do to show us that curve from any elevation and it is in our face 24 7 or almost 24 7 i've yet to see a 24 7 live feed of this curve but they are trying to do that as the technology increases and here is another image of earth and what brought this to my attention as being fake was how far the moon is moving in addition to the clouds not moving and i say that because very few people understand how the moon works on the heliocentric model they assume that when it passes overhead and rises and sets like the sun that it is moving around us at those speeds but we're told that it takes 27 days for this moon to go around the earth if this moon is traveling this far while these pictures are being taken and compiled together guess what this was more than just a little afternoon with a quarter turn of earth or however far it moves here this would have taken a lot longer for this to happen you would have more likely seen the earth spinning beneath the moon that is moving much slower and within that time not a single cloud moves and then we get other footage like this where the clouds are moving and the earth is stationary so lots of different contrasting things that we are seeing none of them make sense and it's why we are starting to question reality because we're tired of believing cartoons not that you're dumb for believing in them we all did we were all you once but now let's go to the next test to prove that there is curve and that we can see it from ground level or near ground level and by near I mean even a couple hundred miles up 70 something miles up so brace yourselves it's about to get real and we're gonna do some actual science and repeated observations something we don't see a lot on Discovery Channel and from people like Bill and I or documentaries on Netflix but they do have some good styrofoam cutting skills and some cheap flashlights so let's get started with some footage taken by Red Pill Philosophy a globe skeptic where he was looking for a lighthouse that was about 13 miles away and trying to see if there was any curvature between him and this lighthouse and what do you know on his first try he found the curvature of earth he should have stopped there like everyone else on TV and said yep it is round you cannot hide that much of a giant lighthouse and the shoreline of a nearby peninsula unless the earth is round people and he should have stopped but he didn't he went back to that same location again when the atmospheric conditions were different and he tried to zoom in and see if he could find the lighthouse and he started to realize that there was some land that was visible that he couldn't see the first time and he panned around searching for the curvature that he once saw wondering if it would still be there now that he's seeing some land and what do you know there it is not just the entire lighthouse but the land beneath it the dry land that we now know of as earth because the curvature although it can be seen it also vanishes everything has a vanishing point a little bit further these things would vanish into the atmosphere even if they would be visible without refraction you can go back make these repeated observations or just watch time-lapse photography and you will see the curve rise as the mountains in the background drop behind the curve it's easy to see and never will you ever see something come up like a scorpion tail and show you things that are hidden behind any curvature that technology as far as I know does not exist to see around curves but there are lots of experiments you can do some geniuses out there have done them recorded them studied them and made more observations than people who are studying for their doctorate degree and they are defending what they believe in with real solid evidence do we sometimes see the curve yes is there a reason of course and you have people like Joshua Nowicki showing us things that we would have thought were a mirage just like the meteorologist tells us it was but then we see further beyond miles of missing curve with world record photos and you have other people who are learning how to make modifications to their camera technology 
and their telescopes and zooming into things that we should never be able to see, like mountains that are over 200 miles away. That is many miles of curve, guys, that's missing. And you have to ask yourself, how much curve could be missing before I start to think that it might not be there? Before I start to investigate into why it's missing using the globe Earth math? Is Earth way larger than they're telling us? Or is it just not round? Those are the only two options. But the evidence that you don't see and will never see on TV is mind-blowing evidence that shows you things that should not only be hidden by a few miles of curve, but should be hidden by over 100 miles of curve. At 30,000 feet, when you get above the atmosphere, you can see a lot further. And this guy here, Jay Tolan Media One, at his channel, this guy deserves some recognition. He has done something that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is curve missing over a distance of 1,200 miles. This is insane, and if I hadn't seen it, I probably wouldn't believe it. Because people always ask me, well, if Earth is flat, why can't we see Mount Everest from where I live? And those are good questions, but they're Bill Nye types of questions. Because we get those types of questions from people like him, who don't realize that you can't see an unlimited distance through atmosphere, or through pretty much any medium. Even water has its limitations. Crystal clear water. When you get to certain depths, it filters out enough light to where it's pitch black. You can watch any documentary on deep oceans to figure that out. And this isn't new science. This isn't something we're making up. We are taking real science and applying it to what we can prove. Not to computer animations, not to theories, but things that we can actually prove. Do we have a complete working model? I don't know of many that do, of any model, flat, round, heliocentric, stationary. We don't have it all figured out yet. That's okay. If we can get past the hate and the divisions and work together, we're not going back to the dark ages. We're actually figuring things out. Things that are changing people, not just mentally, but spiritually. People are realizing why they were put here in the first place, who they are, why everyone is lying to them, about what they live on and the significance of a lie that seems so innocent. Trust me, I thought that was the most innocent thing that anyone could ever lie about, but it's not. There is something sinister going on and it's not conspiracy type of stuff, it's factual stuff that's been going on for centuries before you and I got here. And there are other tests we can do and that I plan on doing and have already done that I wanted to include in this. But I think it should end now with you just going, okay, what experiments can I do to prove reality without going to a video that says the flat earth has been debunked and they've debunked themselves with a flashlight and some styrofoam. I know you guys are way smarter than that and that you'll do some experiments of your own like the ones that I've done here with the fisheye lens experiments, comparing them to what you see with space footage how sometimes that earth or horizon line is flat, sometimes it's curved, it's always changing, just like the lighthouse footage you saw where it changed. The curve of earth should not change from the same height as drastically as we're seeing it. And yes, people say, well, it's all because of the fisheye when it's flat or when it curves in the opposite direction. That's because of the fisheye. So a concave, convex, flat earth all three of those are said to be because of a fisheye lens well you can do experiments with a straight line and a fisheye lens and produce those effects but see if you can produce the exact perfect concave lines that we have seen time and time again from many different launches and from many different angles and you can't i've tried it many times and been unsuccessful you might be able to prove me wrong and I would like for you to send me your research it would be a much welcomed gift as opposed to the hateful comments and then run away <laughs> even though it's nice that you stop by I appreciate all of you guys 
there is a lot of tests you can do and a lot of research left to do. The shape of Earth is not the most important truth, but it has been a great tool to send people to that truth, and that's what scares the powers that run this place, the ones who are behind the curtains, making sure that we believe reality the way they want us to. And like I say all the time, you guys are a beloved creation of the Most High. The love that He has for you is also being hidden. He's not who you think. You're not who you think. It's time to share that love while we still can. Time is running out. And we need to wake up as many people as we can to the truth. Not just about creation, but about the Creator. He loves you. We love you, but only because He has shown us who you are and how beloved you really are. And that's why you're persecuted, especially when you find truth. So be safe, take care, and God bless.